I'm a Barkindy person. Most of us Barkindy people, we don't say we curries, we say we Barker, we bitches, and that's mean we Darling River black people. Our name is taken after the river which we love and we respect. Well, it's the lifeblood of all the inland of Australia, and, and if there's no water, there's no life. The barker, it fed us. The fish, you name it, we got it. The Darling River that we see here is the artery of the outback. It is the life and breath of everything we do. This is such a big part of my family and has been for generations, and I don't want it to stop. In the Macquarie Marshes, water is a pivotal point of ecosystem function. So our livelihood depends on grazing a wetland. The healthier the wetland, the healthier our enterprise. I spend a lot of my time on the telephone talking to clients, in particular farmers, and although they come to me for expert legal advice over the years, I've come to see it almost as a collaboration. She's very quick to tell you that you're wasting your time. Don't get waylaid by things that, you know, that, that aren't there. And we appreciate the frankness, and we also appreciate her great knowledge in, in, in what we're dealing with. We have problems with the river because we believe it's just not flowing. We think it's got the hands of man all over it and no one is doing any compliance work on it. Right now, we have an opportunity to fix it. It's a beautiful, beautiful bit of water and I want it to be around for a long, long time, if not forever. Sometimes the swear pool go and we can't drink the water because of the blue-green algae. And what we're trying to tell the government people, don't let then pump the river dry. However they deal with it, the water has got to be given back to these rivers. This riverbed beside me was dry for nine months. It was an environmental, social and economic disaster. It's really hard for us as farmers to get the message out there and we don't have the legal expertise. And so it's been fantastic to work the Environmental Defender's Office to use their skills to fight to save our river. What's the good of land without water? We haven't even got a name if the river dies. We once had a mighty river which delivered billions and billions of litres from north to south. Now farmers at the top end of the system are competing for water with farmers at the bottom end of the system. To put things in perspective, that was the peak of the flood in 1998. There was a Sydney harbour flowed past Kilpa in one day. We've had top bureaucrats of many of the big government organisations, the MDBA, Department of Ag, all sorts of people that we could never get to. And I believe it's all through the, the EDO and what power they, they gave us because the bureaucrats were willing to write us off as nobodies. It could be a whole industry taking advantage of this money and doing the wrong thing with it. And how that makes me feel is, is beyond words. As a water lawyer, I have a good understanding of the causes of water scarcity in the Murray-Darling Basin. Seeing some of those causes, it's upsetting and at a really core level, it's unjust. Environmental Defender's Office were really key in bringing to light the allegations of water theft, corruption and maladministration in the Murray-Darling Basin. The EDA has got a big part to play and has played a massive part in what's happened in the last 12 months since the Four Corners show. That's where the EDA stands up. I mean, we're fighting powerful organisations in the community that simply are there for economic gain. In my understanding, there could be three things causing a deterioration in the, in the river. One is government policy. Two is closely related is over extraction especially at critical times. And the third thing is you can call it whatever you like, whether it's climate change, climate variation, whatever else, something has changed and we are no longer getting rain up north, which uh, filters down our system. That is getting less and less and has been for quite some time. The ability for the wetland to respond after a drought is challenged by upstream dams, irrigation development and social demands on the river. It's got to be a counterbalance. The EDO was that counterbalance for us. When we found the EDO, it was a weight had lifted off our shoulders. There was someone who could help. The EDO, having that special place in the community, have that ability to be able to put more pressure on and know the right ways about putting more pressure on. I think the EDO has given us some backbone. Put a steel rod in our back, we've got a little bit of hope on the horizon, and the little bit of hope is actually increasing and increasing as, as days go. 
We're very fortunate to have the Environmental Defender's Office to fight our cause. I believe the video have been fantastic in exposing to the general public some of the corruption that's happening, the manipulation of the figures. The EDO has given us a voice, given us the ability to compete on equal terms, to go to the people with a strong, robust argument that will stand up in a court of law. I think as well when you develop expertise in this area, whether you're a lawyer or a scientist or, or an economist, you develop an understanding of what the consequences could possibly be if we don't manage our resources, our water resources, sustainably and equitably. I think the EDO are playing now a big part in trying to save the darling, and we appreciate it. If you didn't have the EDO, what do you think the future of the river would be? Um, I don't think there was a future. No. Because nobody else is going to take it up.